A few years ago, I was thinking about where I wanted to live. Specifically, whether I wanted to move into the city, stay in the suburbs where I was, or buy some land out in the country. Now, when I say I was thinking about where to live, that's not true. I wasn't thinking at all. In fact, the first thing I did is I went to Google and typed in city versus country living to see what other people were saying. And it was at that moment that I realized something. I have a bad habit of outsourcing my thinking. Let's call it lazy thinking. You might have this habit too. If you do, keep watching because I'm gonna show you some powerful ways to replace that lazy thinking with intentional active thinking that helps you make better decisions and move forward with confidence. Now, let's talk about lazy thinking. There is nothing wrong with leveraging the internet to make better decisions. Say you're traveling and you want to visit some lesser known attractions, then go to Google, go to Reddit and see what other people are saying. Not sure what TV to buy? The internet can help you. But then there are decisions or problems or questions or ideas that we have that aren't so easily answered by just going to Google and making a quick search. Or they are problems, questions, decisions that we have to make that actually benefit from us not just jumping straight to the internet, but instead intentionally thinking about them by ourselves first. I'm talking about things like, how should I solve this problem I have with my employee or my boss? Uh, should I have kids? Where should I live? How should I structure my daily routine? All things that are unique to you and your situation. Seeking the advice and opinion of others can aid you in making these types of decisions and solving these types of problems. But the problem arises when we default to seeking the advice of others. We default to going to Google as the first step and often relying on it entirely and completely only to be disappointed later on because we haven't actually thought through what we're dealing with. And there are two reasons I think why this is a problem. The first is that it encourages lazy thinking. Lazy thinking is a bad habit. If you never truly sit down and think through problems and decisions, ideas, questions you have, concepts, you'll never develop the skill of thinking and decision making. This lazy thinking will lead to poor decision making over time, which will lead to poor results and worse outcomes for you. But secondly, it gets you average results and answers. If you're seeking the collective opinion of others, the insights of others, you will get the average. It just makes sense, right? And that average might be correct. And average isn't bad. Sometimes it might even be ideal. If you're looking for recommendations on a certain video game to play or, or book to read, then getting the average sort of collective opinion can be a great way to make that decision. But many decisions such as business problems that need to be solved or how you should structure your daily routine, these things are unique. And with these unique problems and decisions, an above average answer or solution that comes from deep thinking can often lead to far better outcomes and far better results. One observation I've made uh, mostly looking at myself, but also looking at others, is that most of the time we already know what to do or we know enough to figure out what to do. You have a wealth of knowledge and experience that you have built up over your life. When you habitually and instinctively outsource your thinking by going to Google first when you shouldn't really be doing that or seeking the immediate opinion of others, you fail to leverage this experience and knowledge that you have. But when you start by engaging in intentional thinking, you do leverage it. Because the truth is with most decisions, especially smaller ones, you already know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, you likely have enough experience and knowledge to think through the problem or decision that's in front of you. For example, when it came to the decision of where do I want to live, I was confused and paralyzed for so long. All I had done was outsource my thinking, I'd read other people's opinions and I was getting mixed opinions, right? Because some people had a preference for this, some people had a preference for living in the city, others did not. It wasn't until I sat down and actually thought through the decision and through the options for myself that I gained some sort of clarity. I lived both in the city and the country in the past and there were aspects of both that I liked and disliked, which I could think about and analyze. I looked ahead at the next three to five years and thought about what was important to me and my family. 
and which living environment would support the goals that I had. I thought about business and network effects and the fact that being closer to a city definitely has some benefits just in terms of proximity to others and so on and so on. I thought through the layers of that decision for myself. This sort of original thinking or intentional thinking drawing from my own experiences, my own insights was far more useful to me than when I went straight to Google and sought others' opinions. Now, there will be times where you neither know what to do or have the knowledge and experience to figure it out. And those are times where it can be extremely useful to go and find opinion, find advice, find information that you don't have. But with most decisions and problems, you do know what to do or you do have the requisite knowledge and experience to figure it out and to think through it. The reason you choose not to engage in this thinking for yourself, this intentional thinking, is because it's hard and it requires a lot of self-awareness and introspection, which can sometimes be uncomfortable. It's worth noting that the high impact decisions you need to make almost always require real thinking, original thinking, intentional thinking. There are questions, problems, and decisions that can be solved fairly easily by Google or ChatGPT or whatever comes next, Bing Chat. I'm talking about questions like, what recipes can I cook with these ingredients? Uh, which model of car is most reliable? Which career options offer reasonable pay without a ton of workload? But there are also decisions that have a higher impact and consequence that require you to actually think. Things such as, how do I best balance the goals I have? Should I spend more time on my business this year or more time with family? What should I study? These decisions, these questions, these problems can only be answered ultimately by you. Ideally with much of your original thought and some helpful advice from others to help shape your thinking around it. So what should you do? What should you do instead of outsourcing your thinking, instead of jumping straight to chat GPT or Google and engaging in this sort of lazy research and lazy thinking? The answer is not to avoid these things. It's not to avoid technology. It's not to avoid Google and it's not to avoid asking for advice from others. It's amazing that we have access to these tools, the internet and other people. So ignoring these is not the right answer. The answer I would propose is to engage in intentional thinking first, particularly when a problem or decision you're facing calls for it and benefits from it. And here's how you can do just that. Here's how you can engage in intentional thinking from the very start. The first thing is to simply be aware and conscious of your habit to engage in this lazy thinking, to outsource your thinking. If you're anything like me, you have this habit of going to Google whenever you have a problem or decision to make. Uh, and it's just this sort of like reflexive, instinctive thing that you do. But once you become aware of the fact that you're doing that, hopefully even just by watching this video, you're more aware of that. Uh, you can start to stop yourself or you can you can see yourself doing it and you can pull back and decide instead to sit down and think by yourself to begin with. And the way I like to do that and what I recommend for you too is to use pen and paper. It sounds so simple and I know that your note taking app probably has a cool canvas mode or whiteboard and it helps you think better and so on and so on and so on. But it's too easy to get distracted it's too easy to jump on Google, jump on Reddit and see what other people think. Get away from your laptop, get away from your phone, use pen and paper. You are trying to work with your mind and what you know. And the more you can block out distractions, the better. And then you want to work from first principles or at least get as close as you need to. The alternative title for this tip is to ask yourself probing questions. So when you're engaging in this type of intentional thinking, you want to get as close as possible to the fundamental truths of the problem or decision that you're faced with. So let's say I have an employee in my business that's causing tension and I'm not sure how to address it. Sometimes I get angry and think I should just let him go. Uh, other times I think I should give him a second chance. Well, I want to start by thinking about the first principles. What is the truth of the situation? Is he actually causing tension or do I just think he is? What is causing that tension? What's causing the tension behind the tension? Is there other information that might explain his behavior 
that I haven't considered or may not even be aware of. Now, I can't get to exact first principles in this situation, but by asking these probing questions, I can get a lot closer to the truth than if I didn't ask these questions at all. And at the very least, it helps me understand the situation better and consider different perspectives. So you want to engage in that first principles type of thinking, asking yourself probing questions and getting as close as possible to the truth of the problem, the decision, or the situation that you are in. Related to this, you want to be ruthlessly objective. When we think reactively and when we outsource our thinking, we engage in this lazy type of thinking, our mind is clouded by confirmation bias. It's clouded by incorrect judgments. It's clouded by emotional interference. When thinking actively and intentionally, we want to remove as much of that as possible and see things for how they truly are. And the first principles thinking, asking those probing questions, it helps with this, right? But you also want to make sure that you're not getting in your own way. So a good question to ask yourself here is, is this true or do I just want it to be? And also, what is the whole truth here? What am I neglecting to consider? And the second question is crucial. When I was thinking about city versus country living, I kept convincing myself that living in the country would be better because, you know, it's a more relaxed environment, uh, there's natural surroundings, there's more land to do stuff on, the air is cleaner, so on and so forth. But in these periods where I reactively thought about this and kept convincing myself, I often failed to look at the whole picture. I failed to acknowledge the downsides and the negatives, such as you're further away from all the action. It's harder to build relationships with people who are my age. It's a slower pace. It doesn't really fit my style. It's time consuming having to fix stuff and a bunch of other downsides that I could list out. So you want to make sure that you're being ruthlessly objective and looking at the entire decisional problem with all the positives and negatives included. You also want to think through the second and third order consequences. So one powerful principle is not just to think about the immediate consequence of a decision that you make or a problem that you solve, but the flow on effects from that, the flow on consequences from that decision that you've made. For example, let's go back to the employee that's causing tension. Maybe I hate conflict. I want to resolve that conflict and my mo emotions are speaking louder than my intellect. So I make the decision, mostly because it feels good to me, to keep that employee on, but I tell them to play nice. The first order consequence of that is that I've resolved this conflict that I'm facing. I no longer have to make the hard decision. And likely for a few days or a few weeks, everything's good. And there's a small chance that everything gets resolved and it's not an issue ever again. But it's highly likely that the second order consequence of my decision is that I'm faced with this exact same problem shortly down the line. The employee is causing tension again because that's just who he is. And out of ignorance or simply because I didn't want to, I didn't think through that second order consequence. And now I have to make the decision again as to whether I want to keep him on or let him go. Now it's worth mentioning that while this is a powerful principle and you should do it, you should think through the flow and consequences of your decision, not just the first consequence, but the second order and third order. There's not much use going too far down the rabbit hole of consequences because that's infinite and it's impossible to predict beyond a certain point. But at least think through the second order consequences. Think through what could happen as a result of the decision you're making and what could happen as a result of that result, if that makes sense. And the final piece of advice here is to stick with it for some time. So if it's a big problem or a big decision that you have to make, then you should stick with it for some time. Sometimes you only need 30 minutes to really think through the problem and come to a solution that you're happy with. Other times you might need days and occasionally you need weeks. And when I say stick with it, I don't mean think about it 24 seven. Take breaks, let your thinking work itself out in the background in your subconscious. Go for walks, then come back to it. And finally, I know I said finally for that last one, but this is the actual uh, final, final tip. Once you've hit diminishing returns, then it makes sense to start outsourcing your thinking. So you'll often find that you don't need to consult Google or seek the advice of others at all when you engage in this type of thinking work. But sometimes you'll be dealing with a problem, an idea, a situation where you just get stuck and you need some fresh insights. When you're at that point, 
it is then that you should look for other answers, that you should leverage the thinking that others have done. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And remember, if you want to join WorkSprint for March, head on over to worksprint.co and click sign up. It'll be great to have you on board.